Welcome to another episode of Sailing Ruby Rose. As you can see now, there are three hulls, not two. But in addition to that, we also have a completed deck and a completed hardtop. So if you're interested in these, keep watching. We've got so much to show you. Like a bird on a tree. I'm just sitting here. So this is her, the deck. She is super large. Look at the width of those transom steps. It's a beautiful, beautiful boat. And we're gonna jump on board now and have a really good look at all the features that we saw in the mold, that we've seen in the renders. This is super exciting and I am absolutely pumped to show it to you. So let's get on board. So let us start first. What have we got here? This is the width of the transom. It is very, very, very wide. I think here we probably got about probably two and a half foot. So that's fantastic very wide transom steps and i have talked to james in advance here i am allowed to climb up here so firstly wide transom steps all non-slip this is all obviously covered because it is all prepared and fed engine hatch this is the outside engine hatch so here we are the deck of the 1370 there is just so much to show you here from this area over here which is going to be our saloon through to this area, which is going to be the nav station, helm stations, a huge, huge cockpit kind of spreading into the saloon and with no visible step. That's a small thing, but it's also a big thing for us because essentially it means you have one big open plan living area if you want to. So let's go and take a look at all these little details. They're all super important. It's actually pretty emotional for me to be up here just seeing just the space that's gonna be our home. So let's just take a really good look. There is a continuous area between the inside and the outside of this whole boat. Now, something that you need to be aware of is that although the, the flooring isn't down here, there is no step, there's no lip. There's nothing here that's gonna make you kind of step over to get into your living area. So this really is a massive open plan living area. The gutter that you see here, that is just gonna be obviously to catch excess water. But again, what we can see is I just pan round. Saloon. This is literally the size of our saloon, this lovely L-shaped settee. As I walk around, you're gonna be able to see exactly what I can see and what I'll be able to see or what we'll be able to see when we have guests or whether we're just dining. Moving forward, nav desk. Now this hasn't obviously been put in because this is all done in joinery but again a large and wide area forward facing and i can see exactly what i've got outside there this will be the companionway heading down and then we have the plinths where the galley is going to go so we can see the space that we're going to have in the galley overall we have a huge 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 amount of space so yeah this is our cockpit, absolutely huge. Couple of things I wanna point out to you. Just looking down here, we have lockers. The locker's gonna head there. So that's a storage locker there. Moving back, life raft position. That life raft is obviously gonna be released from the transom. And as we have always said, the life raft is gonna be deployed within 30 seconds or there's no point in having one. Helm stations haven't been put in and the helm stations it will be there. We've also got steps up and I'm just gonna take, I'm gonna take a walk onto the deck and just show you exactly what's going on here because there's a lot to see. I'm obviously gonna try and do this without kind of going for a button. The deck space here is huge. It's all covered in brown paper because it's all finished, but there's so much to see. We have starboard side, fore deck, stanchion bases. The hatches, now, as you saw when they were making one of those molds, they are all in place now. You can see through the brown paper, the, the, the non-slip area. So this is all being done. This is all going to be non-slip. And then moving forward, what we have here is the track for the, the jib. Something to be aware of. I'm just going to put my foot into the shot. The size of these two lockers, absolutely massive. And then moving forward, we've got the catway. And we talked before about that little anchor bridle area where the anchor stowage is going to occur. That actually makes far more sense now that we can actually see it just in the shot there. Moving across, we've got the bow of the port hull. And again, moving forward, three large lockers in front of the catway. This is obviously where the mast will be stepped. 
Just look at this. Look at the size of this thing. It is huge. This is a 45 foot boat. So just to look at this, just from this perspective, I'm stood on the bow of the port side hull. Cockpit, continuously flowing into our saloon. That is a huge, huge amount of area. It's probably more space than we've actually got in our own lounge at home. And what I can show you, there's a lot of work that they've done here with areas like this. So we've got this captive line storage area. And again, that's really important so that everything is flush. So we have flush mounted hatches. We have all the lines captives so that there are reduced tripping hazards. All in all, like super, super impressive and super beautiful. But again, just a perspective, the absolute size of this it is incredible. It's such a big boat and she's only 45 foot. So yeah, I'm pretty, pretty damned impressed with this. So really, really interesting to see what they've done with the deck. Yeah, super happy. We have had a complaint and actually all of you, all 150 something thousand of you are actually really actually don't complain that often but today we have a complaint and the complaint is from chick flick cherry and chick flick cherry says you know what i'm not into boat building and this is kind of like boring me a little bit can you show your lives in vietnam so yeah chick flick cherry this one's for you we thought well actually it is such a strange place compared to the culture that we're used to i think we're gonna kind of like pepper the episodes at the ends with little aspects of i my art lives in Vietnam. Now, obviously Teresa's not here. She's still in London, just doing some life admin and sorting a few other bits out for Ruby Rose too. However, this is my life in Vietnam. This morning, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna check out the apartment. Actually, I've got it is show you what we do, how we live here in Vietnam. Now, actually it's, uh, Pretty straightforward life, but it's something that you're probably going to be interested in. So today is actually a boring day, and um, I'm going to show you like the aspects of our life that actually are the mundane, because sometimes the mundane are things you're going to want to see. And really, from our point of view, coffee culture is a big part of it. Editing is a big part of it, and we, as most YouTubers, work independently. We work completely independently of, of you know, we haven't got bosses. Um, so today I'm going to sit and show you what my morning involves, so I hope you like this one. So yeah, this is um, the ride to work. It's pretty, um, well, it's quiet now. Wait till four o'clock and it's just crazy mental. So I tend to wait until, well, after everyone else has done the commuter runs to get to school. Anyway, better concentrate on what I'm doing. Okay. First rule of shopping in Vietnam, never get off the bike. I I I'm going to go to the bike. Yeah, I'm going to go to the bike. How much time? I'm going to go. 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 <laughs> come on, come on, rock here. come on, come on. So that was uh, Bai Chuk. Bai Chuk is, uh, well, it's not conventional Vietnamese. Chuk is um, slang for 10, so 70, 70,000 dong, which is about three bucks. So three bucks for the red irises. Uh, so, uh, Hua Do. Uh, Hua is uh, flowers, Do is red. There you go. Come on. I'm ten lai yi. Trying to get this stuff home, it's pretty hard. Here 
getting a crazy humid. But at lunchtime you have to be indoors, you literally cannot be out, it's just too just too hot. Like you end up in just a, a sweaty mess. So that's life in Vietnam on a fairly average Tuesday. Life here is fantastic. Every day for us, for me, is an absolute joy. And Chick Flick Cherry, I kind of think that, or I hope that that is something that you wanted to see. If you do have aspects of our life that aren't in the factory that you want to see, like the guy singing karaoke next door all night, or the cock call that clearly lives in the flat underneath, let us know. We are happy. I am happy, happy to just film everything because I, I actually really, really enjoy this culture. So, something different at the end of an episode about boat building, and I do realize that not all of you are into the build, so we're trying to kind of juggle this as well as we can. There's a baby crying, there's a cockerel, there's motorbikes, there's a lot of noise. Thankfully, we have double glazing. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. We'll be back next week with another episode, juggling boat building and life in Vietnam. So, I hope you enjoyed that. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Tell us what you want to see. And we'll see you again really soon. Goodbye.